This chapter focuses on the government's role in the economy, particularly how it deals with expansions and contractions in the business cycle. Part 1 explores the tools of government stabilization policy in terms of the aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Part 2 discusses fiscal policy measures that automatically adjust government expenditures and tax revenues when the economy moves through the business cycle phases, as well as the problems, criticisms, and complications of fiscal policy. Part 3 will look at the serious issues with national debt and also false concerns. Discretionary fiscal policy refers to the deliberate manipulation of taxes and government spending by Congress to alter real domestic output and employment, control inflation, and stimulate economic growth. Discretionary means the changes are at the option of the federal government. Discretionary fiscal policy changes are often initiated by the President on the advice of the Council of Economic Advisors, but remember that all of the President's suggestions must pass congressional approval. This process can be slow moving. The first type of government intervention, expansionary fiscal policy, is used to combat a recession. The problem during a recession is that aggregate demand is too low, causing cyclical unemployment. So increasing government spending and or a reduction in taxes will increase aggregate demand. Expansionary fiscal policy will create a deficit. But the hope is that as the economy expands in future years, this deficit will be paid back. This figure shows the expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy uses increases in government spending, or tax cuts, to push the economy out of the recession. In an economy with a marginal propensity to consume of 0.75, a $5 billion increase in government spending, or a $6.67 billion decrease in personal taxes, which produces a $5 billion initial increase in consumption, expands aggregate demand from AD2 to the downsloping dash curve. The multiplier then magnifies this initial increase in spending to AD1. So real GDP rises along the horizontal axis by $20 billion. So you might be asking, why would a spending increase of $5 billion create the same desired effect as a $6.67 billion tax cut? The answer is in the marginal propensity to consume. The MPC tells us that for every dollar the government cuts in taxes, the consumer will only spend $0.75 cents and will save the other $0.25. Cents. So if we hope to cause an increase in initial consumption of $5 billion, you must account for this. When demand pull inflation occurs, contractionary policy is the remedy. The problem with inflation is that aggregate demand is too high, so the government will decrease their spending and or increase taxes to cause aggregate demand to fall. When the government uses contractionary fiscal policy, it will create a budget surplus. This figure shows the effects of contractionary fiscal policy. Contractionary fiscal policy uses decreases in government spending, increases in taxes, or a combination of both, to reduce demand pull inflation. Here, an increase in aggregate demand from AD3 to AD4 has driven the economy to point B and ratcheted up the price level to point 2, where it becomes inflexible downward. If the economy's marginal propensity to consume is 0.75, then the multiplier is 4. The government can either reduce its spending by $3 billion or increase its taxes by $4 billion, which would have the same effect of a $3 billion decrease in consumption, to eliminate the inflationary gap of $12 billion. Aggregate demand will shift leftward, first from AD4 to the dashed downsloping curve to its left, and then to AD5 with the price level remaining at P2. The economy will move from point B to point C and the inflationary GDP gap will disappear. So the remaining question is, which is better, adjusting spending or adjusting taxes? Some economists favor higher government spending during recessions and higher taxes during inflationary times if they are concerned about unmet social needs or infrastructure. Both actions either expand or preserve the size of the government. 
Other economists favor lower taxes for recessions and lower government spending during inflationary periods when they think the government is too large and place more importance on individual choice. Both of these actions restrain the growth of government and leave more money in the hands of individual consumers.